In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can set up your own holding company group structure for next to nothing, and this may save you potentially tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds in tax over your business career. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're talking all about holding companies, um, the benefits of them, how they work for you, how they can help you save tax, most importantly, and some of the things you need to be aware of, and also how you actually go about setting these up yourself, so without having to pay an accountant like myself, hundreds, if not thousands of pounds to get this structure set up, how you can do it for just a couple of pounds and save yourself tens of thousands in tax. But before we get stuck in, please do make sure you give this video a thumbs up um, so I know you're enjoying this content and to do more of it. And also make sure you do hit that subscribe button because it really does help me. Um, and I really want to get to 2,000 subscribers as soon as possible. And as soon as we do, I'll be doing tons of more content to say thank you for you guys for supporting me along the way. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Tell any friends, family, colleagues, anyone that might be remotely interested in saving tax in the business, in the property content that I put out there to help you guys pay less tax, be more tax smart, make sure you subscribe and tell everybody about this channel. Okay, so let's get stuck in. So a lot of people um, are aware of holding companies, how they work, what they are, but for anybody who doesn't know what they are, we're gonna go ahead and explain it. So usually when you set a limited company up, you do it yourself. So you set a company up, you're the director, shareholder, or you might have your wife or business partner involved, but fundamentally, you own 100% of the share capital of that company, whether it's a property investment company or a trading business, you own 100% of those shares, and when you sell the shares, you'll pay tax on that. You might qualify for business asset disposal relief, formerly entrepreneur's relief, which means you'd be able to pay just 10% tax on up to a million pounds worth of gains on that disposal. Um, but you own those shares, any dividends you will receive personally because you own those shares, and you'll pay income tax on them. This is the way that most people structure their businesses, and it's absolutely great for a lot of people that are running just normal trading businesses, the smaller businesses where you're not looking to reinvest proceeds or anything like that. That type of structure where you've just got a simple limited company is absolutely um, probably one of the best things for you to have because it keep costs, keeps costs low, it keeps it simple, and if you've got not got a need for all these different limited companies or a holding company, that is probably the best thing for you. But for a lot of people, especially property entrepreneurs, people with successful trading businesses, they want to reinvest the proceeds. So if you've got a company over here, say for instance you've got a baking business, an e-commerce business, no matter what it is, it's making money, it's cash flow generating, and now you want to use that money. You can't keep reinvesting it into that business. You want to put it somewhere safe, bricks and mortar, property investment, buy commercial premises. You want to do something which is going to basically give you long-term capital depreciation, and it's safe. It's not subject to the trading risks of your main business, um, and you know that it's gonna be there for years to come. So buying it all in this company over here, the trading company, that's risky. When you wanna, if you were to try and buy residential property in it to let out, you might actually find it quite difficult to get a mortgage because they usually want it to see in a separate company because if it's subject, if it's all in this limited company over here, the trading company, um, it's subject to the risks of that trade. If you get sued or anything like that, that property which the mortgage lender has security over is potentially subject to that risk. So for these reasons, they wanna see it in a separate limited company and there are some tax benefits benefits to it as well, um, such as making sure you have all the right re relief, so it's entrepreneurs relief, business asset disposal relief on the sale of that trading business, um, business property relief, gift relief, there's a whole host of reliefs that are av only available to a trading business. You start putting investment activities in there and you might actually prejudice the availability of that relief in its entirety. So for this reason, you do want to separate out the trade and investment side of things, which is where having that second company is fantastic. However, when you want to move money around, say for instance, you've got £100,000 in your trading business, you want to stick it into your investment business. There are a couple of ways you can do it. The obvious one is to loan it from company A to company B. You can do this, but at the end of the day, that loan is repayable. If you write that loan off, there could potentially be some tax charges on this, which will give rise to a tax allowable loss in one company, taxable income in the other, and if one doesn't have the availability to relieve those losses against any other trading profits, there's gonna be some tax paid over here, um, which is on top of the tax paid over here, which means that overall, you will be out of pocket. Other ways of doing this is that you might take a dividend. So where you own the shares personally, you'll take a dividend from company A, the trading company, 
which will be taxed on at a mix of 7.5, 32.5 and 38.1% depending on your taxable income. And then you can put it into the other company as share capital or a director's loan. So clearly this kind of structure isn't the best way forward because you've got the issue of that loan needing to be repaid or written off and there's tax issues. If you take it out personally, you've got more tax issues. You can lose up to 38.1% of your money um, just in dividend tax alone. So surely there's got to be a better way. And the good news is there absolutely is. This is where the group structure comes into it. So rather than you owning the shares, of the, say we've got two companies, a company A, company B, you don't own the shares personally anymore. What we do is we put another company in place, say for instance holding company or group company. Um, you can use those two terms interchangeably. And what you do is you own the shares in the holding company. Say for instance I set up a company, we've got Joshua Tharby Holdings Limited. I own 100% of the shares in that. And then Joshua Tharby Holdings Limited would then own the shares in all of my subsidiary companies. So that's a technical term, subsidiary, so a company that sits underneath it. Um, it owns all the shares in that. So what that means is any dividends that get paid from any of the companies underneath, they go into Joshua Tharby Holdings. And then if I wanted to take any dividends from the company, they would have to come from Joshua Tharby Holdings Limited to me because that's the only limited company I actually personally own the shares in, if that makes sense, if you follow that through. Um, because dividends, they get paid in proportion to legal ownership of shares. So if I only own the shares in that, that's the only company I can physically receive dividends from. Of course, any of the other companies I can still continue to receive interest and salaries from if I were doing any work for them, if I put money into any of those companies. But for dividends, it has to follow the chain of ownership in the share structure. So some of the other benefits of having that group structure in place are that you can move money around tax-free. So what this means is if that trading company wants to pay £100,000 out in dividends, rather than it going across, so rather than it going across as a loan or anything like that, what would happen is, is the trading company would pay a dividend to the group company, then it's that group company that loans it back down. This way, it's completely out of the risk of the trading company. So rather than that trading company having a debtor on its books, basically a £100,000 loan, which creditors could potentially come in and try and have a stab at, it's completely out of that because it goes into the holding company, which doesn't trade, so there's no trading risk to it. And it's the trading company, it's the holding company at the top, sorry, that loans it down to that investment company. All of this can be done completely tax-free, so the holding company will receive dividends from that trading company completely tax-free. And also if you want to move capital assets around as well, so if you've got properties from one company to another, you can usually do this without any capital gains tax, any stamp duty, if they're in a VAT group, no VAT. Um, all of these kind of things, can you can do loads of restructuring completely tax-free, so if you had a company over here, you want to take some of the real estate out but sell the trade on, you can do all these kind of restructures and get ready for a potential exit because you've got this holding company structure in place. Also, when it comes to selling that trading business, as long as the holding company owns more than 10% of the shares, you'll qualify for something called the substantial shareholders exemption. And what this means is that the sale proceeds from the sale of the trading business can be received completely tax-free. So if you were to sell it personally, you'll pay tax at a mix of 10 and 20%, depending on your business asset disposal relief lifetime limit being available. If you sell it from the limited company, you could sell it for 10 million quid, that holding company will get 10 million pound cash in the bank without paying a single penny in tax if you meet the qualifying criteria for the substantial shareholders exemption. So that's massively valuable in itself. So that means for people that do have an exit, especially early on in their lifetime, you've then got that massive amount of cash to plough down to your investment company and build that substantial asset base up. Of course, you don't get the money in your own name personally, as if you would have sold it and paid your entrepreneur's relief, but as long as you're reinvesting it in potentially um, qualifying assets, then there is the structure to potentially do a demerger later on and actually pull it out so you can qualify later on, depending on exactly what you actually do with the money. Um, I know for a lot of people, they want to build that asset up, move overseas, in which case the UK tax implications are far and few between. So now you know about holding companies, what they do and how they could potentially work for you, let's talk about how you actually get one of these set up. So if you've already got a trading company or any company set up, it's a little bit more difficult to get a trade, uh, group structure in place because of the basically the market value sales that would need to take place. So what we do is we can write to HMRC and get something called statutory clearance to confirm that they're happy, that it's a share for share exchange. And we have to basically swap the shares around in the trading companies for the holding companies, um, do a whole host of paperwork. But the end result is that you end up owning the shares in the holding company and then the holding company owns the shares in the subsidiary companies, which allows for the tax efficient movement of funds, the protection of trading assets um, and so much more. 
The easiest way and the only way you can really do this yourself is if you set it up from the get-go. So this, doesn't, this only applies to people that are new in property, new in business, and are just setting their company up now for the first time, but they're planning ahead. They know that they're gonna smash it in business and they're gonna need these group structures now um, to reap the benefits later on. So what you do is basically you set up the shares in the holding company first. You'll set up Joshua Tharby Holdings first. Um, you can do this just no, it's a normal company from a tax purposes from companies house setting the company up You can do one share um, one pound a share all of that kind of stuff You set that company up and then once that's set up and you've got the certificate of incorporation through You then set up all the subsidiary companies and for the person of significant control It'll ask for you for the relevant legal entity So rather than you being the shareholder you actually put your holding company down as the shareholder You personally can still be a director of the company, which is absolutely fine, but for all intensive purposes, the shareholder of all of those subsidiaries is the holding company, and that's about it. That's as complicated as it gets for people that are just setting this structure up for themselves now. Um, they've not got any other businesses, so it's relatively easy to do. One thing to bear in mind is though, is that as you've got an extra limited company, you're gonna have more accountancy fees because that separate company will need its accounts doing, it will need its tax returns doing. Um, so that's definitely something to bear in mind is that if it's gonna be a while before you need those benefits, um, kind of you know five to 10 years, the additional accountancy fees on the get-go might not actually be worth it when you compare that to the additional costs of just doing a share for share exchange in five to ten years time to get that group structure in place so you need to kind of weigh out the cost benefit analysis there to see which is going to give you the best return so it really is as simple as that guys um, let me know in the comments are you going to basically go ahead and set up a group structure now is this something you thought about in the past have you not heard about it before until today's video um, let me know you can also use a group structure of alphabet shares check out some of my other videos for the benefits on those um, absolutely speak to your accountant about getting that group structure with the alphabet shares because that's not something you can do yourself but if you're going to go ahead and set one of these up because of the fantastic tax benefits i've run through today let me know in the comments i really do appreciate it and make sure you do subscribe so you can smash that 2000 um, and really take this content and the tax savings most importantly to the next level thank you very much for watching guys bye for now